Okay, so let's continue on with autonomic nervous system. So this is parasympathetic, it's the break. And then we have cranial nerves and we have um, pelvic nerves. So we call them cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10, S2 to S4. So there's another nickname. Let's get to the, the image. This is the best one to actually review. So parasympathetic is also known as cranial sacral because it has branches that come off of cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10 and it also has branches that comes off the pelvic nerves um, S2 to S4, or sacral nerve 2 to sacral nerve number 4. So how I remember these are, we can take a step back, and 3 is oculomotor moves the eye, and it also is associated with um, pupillary light reflexes. Cranial nerve 7 is associated with muscles of facial expression, as well as some sensations to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And then we have 9 and 10, which are both associated with gag reflex, and they control um, other muscles that are associated in that response. So it has sensory and it has motor components to these, and these are all reflexive in nature. Vagus is the traveling nerve. He travels everywhere. He controls most of the internal organs inside of the chest and abdominal cavity. So what do we have here? Um, it's the opposite of sympathetic, right? It acts as the break. It's associated with these cranial nerves and also S2 to S4. And how do, how do I remember this? S2 to S4 keeps the P off the floor. S2 to S4 keeps the penis off the floor. S2 to S4 keeps the P off the floor. And you guys can figure out what that one is based on the other videos that you guys were watching. So if I was to get into a car accident and I damage these pelvic nerves here, then I might have a problem with urination. I might have a problem with erectile dysfunction or any of the associated symptoms. So you guys can take a look through this. Just understand the concept. What's going to happen to the eye? Well, we said with sympathetic, the eye is going to be what? Dilated. So in the case of parasympathetic, you're going to have pupillary constriction. Glands, you're going to have more activation of, of salivation, right? Because you use this for digestion. So this these guys would be more activated. And then heart is the opposite of the sympathetic. So it would slow the heart rate down, right? It acts as the brake. What about the lungs? It would also cause um, bronchoconstriction of the lungs and the airways and decrease the amount of air that can flow into the lungs. What about the rest of this? Well, we said that it does activate and control the GI tract and urination. So all of these, this portion here, is associated with an increase in stimulation. You have more digestion, more secretions to compensate for the digestion, and you have more urination to remove um, excrement, right, from rectum and then also from bladder. Parasympathetic activation, you guys can take a look at that. We just want to keep it as simple as possible. So this comes from Pan Am Sand Bean. Go back and review that, super important. But the most important receptor that you want to know is specifically associated with parasympathetic are your muscarinic receptors. Anytime you hear muscarinic, it's always parasympathetic nervous system that it's associated with. And going back to some of the high yield um, tables, this I did have covered in one of the other um, the other videos, but sympathetic and parasympathetic, like the gas and the brake, right? There's always dual innervation of most of your internal organs. So when one is active, it's more active than the other, let's say sympathetic, that means you're gonna have more gas in it. But if it's not as active, then the other one's gonna take over, right? So parasympathetic. Most of the organs, especially, here's a really good example, the heart. The heart wants to beat 100 beats a minute. But when you're sitting down, what is your resting heart rate? Anywhere from 60 to 80 is normal. A little bit higher than that, you might start pushing into like what we um, can call tachycardia. But parasympathetic is the break. It slows us down when we don't need to be active or we don't need that much energy being consumed. So parasympathetic is pretty dominant for most organs. So you guys can look at that. Here's all the receptors I love. Understand that the ones that we used in the other videos were just high yield areas. But if you look at this, beta 2, it's not just in the lungs, right? It's found in blood vessels. And it helps to rad, relax, and dilate. Whereas E, alpha 1, all of... So what you're going to know from alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 is that the even numbers are relax and dilate. The odd numbers, 1 and 3, are excite or constrict. So really, really high yield stuff. I would actually pause or print this out somehow. So here is the review that I want you guys to know. What are the divisions and functions of the autonomic nervous system? Well, it's sympathetic, parasympathetic, gas and brake, fight or flight, 
rest and digest. What organs are affected? Well, we went over a lot of the organs and then you can always go back to the tables and see what the organs that are affected and the different pathways that would control it and how it's being controlled. Um, what are the neurotransmitters or receptors associated with each division? We did Pan Am, San Bean, Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Beta 1, Beta 2, Beta 3. We did all of that. Um, nitric oxide is what we call a vasodilator. So it by itself, just remember, it's a neurotransmitter that vasodilates. It is associated with a drug called Viagra. So the more nitric oxide you have in an area, the more vasodilation, the more blood flow to the area, the engorgement leads to an erection, right? And then what is the system of the GI tract? We said those parasympathetic. And if I wanted to be specific though, we have one that's inherent and it's called enteric nervous system. What's the difference between nuclei and ganglia? I guess this is from, from previous, but nuclei is just a group of cell bodies. Ganglia is a, cell, a group of cell bodies. Hmm, but this one is located in the peripheral. Um, back in the day, this was essentially in the CNS as well, but now we're going to clarify and say this is peripheral nervous system and this is um, central nervous system. So basically in the brain and spinal cord. What's the difference between pre and post ganglionic fibers and the sympathetic? Well, you need to know that the fibers for sympathetic and parasympathetic are different in length. So sympathetic, how I remember it is if I'm stressed out and I want to just um, let everybody I know know about my stress, maybe I'll jump on something like Facebook. My fingers are short and stubby. So they're what we call preganglionic fibers. And they're short and stubby and they connect to a huge network which has long connection points, right, to all these hundreds of people, whoever you're signed up with for Facebook. So sympathetic has short pre and long post. Parasympathetic is the opposite. When you're focusing on your food, your preganglionic fibers will feed directly into the organ and your post will be really, really short. Okay, what about adrenal medulla? AC, AC, amen, right? Adrenal medulla releases epinephrine, norepinephrine. It's a part of sympathetic nervous system pathway. And then what segments of the spinal cord are associated with sympathetic? Well, remember we said that it was from T1 to L2, so it's also known as thoracolumbar. What are the effects of sympathetics on target organs? You guys can go back and check that out. All right, it depends on the, um, the receptor and also the chemical that's binding to it. So if it's endogenous, that means from within the body, typically it's gonna be some kind of stimulant for that receptor. What are the preganglionic receptors and what neurotransmitters affect them? Pan Am San Bean, that's all I'm gonna say. Go back and look it up with the other videos. What are the postganglionic? Well, that was alpha one, alpha two, beta one, beta two, beta three, E red, E red, E. Go look that up on the other videos as well. And then segments of spinal cord associated with PNS, we said it was from the cranium and the sacrum, so they call it craniosacral. And cranium is cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10. Sacrum was S2 to S4, keeps the, you guys can go over that. What are the effects of parasympathetic? Well, it depends on what organ you, you're looking at. And again, you guys can look back at this. In general, you want to understand that it's more like the break for most organs, except for the GI tract and urinary tract. Preganglionic um, receptors and neurotransmitters, Pan Am San B. Um, how are the following? So this all here, um, this was point and shoot. So an easy one to remember this. I believe I do it on the other videos. Point. So male erection is based on pointing and that's controlled primarily by the PNS, right? The penis has the PNS. And then if you shoot ejaculation, that is associated with Oh my goodness, shoot. So it's a sympathetic nervous system. Same thing for a female, um, relatively so, right? You guys can review this.